For this video, I'll be making the assumption that you have watched the previous two videos in the playlist. So if you haven't, I recommend that you stop viewing this one and go to the playlist and watch the previous two videos. Consider the following program statement. First number is assigned two. And what we can see, I've got a model here where I have a rectangular area representing the variable and we can see two has been placed in that particular variable the next program statement here says number copy is assigned first number well straight away you can see here that a variable has been created with this identifier and if we look at the program statement we can see here there's an assignment statement and what's going to happen is the contents of this variable here are going to be assigned to the content of this one so we can animate that as shown here with that two simply moving to that position. And what we've just seen is a pretty straightforward program with just two program statements. And we've simply shown how we can assign a value to a variable and then copy what's stored in that variable to a different variable. So nothing complicated here. Of course, as you will know from the previous videos, it doesn't quite work in this way. So in a moment, we're going to have a look at what happens when this particular program execute building on the work in the previous video let's have a look at the program we've just discussed here we can see first number is assigned to and what will happen here is an execution space will be generated and into this execution space we will have an object reference and an object and of course the object reference will have the same name as the variable as it appeared in the program statement the two is moved to the object and the object reference will receive an arrow which represents the address of the object in the computer's memory. Or as we prefer to say here for this model, the arrow represents the location of the object in the execution space. Consequently, the object reference and the object are bound, as we can see here. Let's consider the next program statement. Number copy is assigned first number. We will get another object reference being created now this object reference will receive the address that's stored in the object reference first number as represented by the arrow and there we can see the arrow being transferred from the object reference first number to the object reference number copy so number copy is now also bound to the object that contains the two so when we finish executing these two instructions here that's the setup in the execution space now both first number and number copy as they appear in the program both have two but you can see they both share the address of the object in the execution space now you have a choice you can go with this kind of understanding of what happens when we're dealing with integer objects or you can go with this which we looked at a moment ago where we simply regard them as variables as areas of the memory and we can see that the two was moved from one of the variables to the other now this is fine you can go with this but i think that it's a good idea to have a think about what actually happens when we're dealing with object reference and objects and this remember is specific to um, integer objects and other objects and other types but we'll talk about them a little bit later so what we've got here we have two models my advice is to understand both check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python